So you just wanna make sure that everything looks good where it lined up, that you're happy with your design, and that you're double checking before you start sewing everything on that you're sewing to the correct side. So again, remember my big arm is on the left on this side and on the right on this side. So I know when I put them together, the blank insides will be touching and all the designs that I worked so hard on will be on the outside and visible. So you're going to use the running stitch, these small, evenly spaced dashed lines to sew on all of the designs that you want on your character. So these are two different examples of the running stitch. This one using a different color thread where it's visible and this one using um, a matching color thread so it's not as visible. So depending on what you have to work with, um, if you have more than one color of thread at home and you wanna make stitches that stand out, you can do that. If you have matching colors and you want it to kind of blend in, you can do that as well. Now here you'll see that there are two different examples on this running stitch of directions for the running stitch to go. You can follow the shape and stay on top, or you can do this sort of radiating running stitch. And this is exactly the same um, stitch, it's just done in a slightly different direction. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of those now. So once you have your, and I'm gonna again practice on um, this little piece here. When you have your design and it's cut out and ready to go, you're going to line up the design with the piece for the body of your character where you wanna sew it. So I'm gonna start again. I already have my thread knotted and ready to go on here. Make sure that my piece is exactly where I want it to be attached. I'm gonna take my needle and start on the back so that ugly knot that I've made is going to be on the back of my felt, which will mean it's on the inside of my character and no one will see it later. So if I'm sewing a shape on and I wanna do this stitch that stays on top of my design, I'm gonna make sure that I'm moving around, whoop, sorry, up through the back, down through the front. I'm gonna make sure that I'm moving around my design and I wanna stay a slight bit in from the edge. I don't wanna sew right against the edge, but kinda of close. Up through the back, down through the front, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm going through both layers of my felt and evenly spacing those lines. I'm gonna put this back in here, up through the back, down through the front, making my way around the design. So if I'm doing it this way, it's going to stay on top of my design all the way around, and that's one look. Points wise, I don't care which one you choose, to do the ones that stay on top, the ones that radiate out, if you wanna do a combination of, as long as your stitches are nice and evenly spaced. So I'm going to show on this same piece on the other side here, how to do the radiating um, running stitch. So once again, my needle comes up through the back. Now, instead of going down through the front on top of the shape, I'm going to go straight out from where I came up and I'm gonna go down off my shape. I'm gonna come back up on the shape and go down through the front, off the shape. So I'm gonna come up through the shape, down, off the shape. And I would just continue this all the way around until my shape is completely sewn down to my character so that I know that it's nice and secure and it's not going to come off. So once again, either way of doing the running stitch is fine with me. It's just a matter of which design you like. Do you want it to look more patch-like? Do you want it to look more streamlined? 
it's your design you choose. Just keep the stitches nice, evenly spaced, and evenly sized for the neatest looking sewing job. Now again, once I get to the end of my shape, I can't just cut my thread. I wanna end on the back. So I'm gonna flip it over and the back's gonna look like a big old mess and that's totally fine. I'm gonna go underneath one of the loops. So I just chose this one because it's the closest with my needle. And before I pull it all the way tight, go through the loop it's making. And I do it two times to make a knot, three times if you're like me and you wanna be extra safe. And then cut. And depending on which way you chose to sew, your shape is totally attached to your character. So you'll continue sewing all of the pieces onto your character, making sure that you're not sewing anything that's extending over the edges. When sewing your character together, you have a lot of things that can be done with just the simple running stitch. So stacking pieces of felt to create a different kind of design. If you were doing this, um, you would sew the white piece to the red and then the red piece down to the yellow. So you can see here on the back, you can only see the running stitch going around from the red piece because the white piece was stitched on before I stitched the red down to the yellow. So if you had you know, teeth that you wanted to stitch on to the mouth, um, you could stitch the teeth down to the mouth and then stitch them on here. Um, I, for this design, only used the running stitch across the top of the teeth because I wanted his teeth to look like they stuck out a little bit. So maybe in your design, you have a piece that you want to leave disconnected for a reason. Um, that would be a reason why you shouldn't sew all the way around the sides. So his little buck teeth here have the option of kind of sticking out like that. Um, the other thing that you can do with your um, thread is to draw with the thread. So you can use your thread to create little drawings. So on this, I made little designs for underwear. Um, you can see on the back that it doesn't really matter what your stitches on the back look like because no one's gonna see those. You can use the front as what you want your design to kind of look like. And this is a running stitch that we put together um, to create something called a back stitch. So to create the back stitch, it works very much like a running stitch. You're gonna load up your needle with whatever color thread that you're using, tie your knot, everything starts the same with everything that you're going to be sewing. Everything starts with matching up the ends and making that messy knot. And starting on the back of your piece. So these um, thread lines can be used to, you know, add designs onto your character like stitches or if you wanted to write letters or a number or for instance, I wanted to create a little smile or maybe eyelashes on my character, um, something like that. You can use the thread to sort of draw with as you're working and it's a simple um, as a running stitch. It's called a back stitch. So the way that this works is, um, once again, I'm working on a piece of scrap felt here, and I highly suggest you try this on a piece of scrap before you try it on your own character. So starting up through the back, down through the front, up. Now, instead of going forward and going down again, which would be the running stitch I was working on, the back stitch is called the back stitch because you stitch back through where you just came out. So I came up over here and instead of going forward, I'm gonna go back to where I stitched before and pull straight down and it connects and makes a straight line. So I'm gonna come up to leave a gap and then go back where that last stitch left off. Got some dog hair here. It's one of the other nice things about felt, it picks up everything. So up, down, right back through the end, 
and you can connect your lines to create some kind of drawing. Now, if I wanted to skip over here, I could just simply skip over on the back. No one's going to know that I kind of went out of line here. And let's say I wanted to make a little star kind of shape coming up here. So what you just have to pay attention to is what the design is going to look like on the front of your fabric and not worry so much about what the design is going to look like on the back because no one's going to see that part. So if I wanted to make some of the thorns on my cactus out of these little tiny stripes, I could go ahead and use the stitch. And here you can see the back looks like a big old mess, but that's totally fine. Um, to kind of stitch together some of those designs. So I think for my cactus, I'm going to use that back stitch to create some of these little X's that I have and these little stripes on here um, once I've got everything else sewn down.